I banked $100,000 last month. Here's where it went. Just so nobody thinks I'm faking, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through my payment dashboard. I get paid via Stripe and PayPal, so you're gonna see two different numbers. It's just because sometimes I receive payments through Stripe and sometimes I receive payments through PayPal. But let's, let's look at this. And we go over here, we're gonna sort by May 18th to June 18th over the last month. We can see that total amount is $24,218. May 18th to June 18th, very similar. And we can see here, it's $75,146 and no cents. All right, so technically, technically when you add those Stripe and PayPal up, the actual grand total isn't exactly 100,000. It's $99,364, but I think you'll be okay if we round it up to an even 1,000. All right, so I think that's really important that we talk about one thing, and it's when somebody says, I made $100,000 a month, or I had a 10K month, right? We see it all the time in the Facebook groups. What does that actually mean? Well, frankly, a lot of people aren't very honest with the actual numbers. Typically, when somebody says, I had a 10K month, what they're really saying is, I did $10,000 in sales, but the money hasn't hit my bank account yet, and that's not accounting for profit. So what I really wanna do in this video is I wanna give you a transparent, honest look into the behind the scenes of how much I actually bank, AKA the money that comes into my bank account, what I do with it, and how much I ultimately pay myself. That, to me, is an honest look at the finances of an entrepreneur. Excuse the unevenness. So the model that I follow in my business is called the Profit First System. And the Profit First System is all about paying yourself first and then running your business second. And the problem that this solves is that many entrepreneurs, as they grow, their expenses grow. And so they never really get to change their lifestyle or live that sort of fun, luxurious life of affluence that we seek out to build. So what I follow in my business is the Profit First System, which basically says, let's pay yourself first, let's save for retirement first, and then run your business second. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of walk you through the four categories that my money goes into as it hits my bank account. I break it up into four different categories. The first category is sort of called the profit first category, and this is the money that I invest in my future. So 10% of every penny that comes in through my doors goes straight into my retirement and into investments. This way, I'm taking care of myself, not just now, but also in the future. So with $100,000, coming into my door, 10% of it went straight to retirement. After I've put 10% of my money towards my future into investments, the second thing that I'll do is I'll take 30% and that's what I pay myself. The logic behind this is I am the company's best employee, right? So if profit first is my reward for starting a business, the reward for continuing in the business and being my business's best employee is to be paid 30% of everything that comes in through the door. So with $100,000 coming in through the door, I pay myself personally $30,000 a month. Next, I'm going to take 15% of every penny that comes in through the door, and I'm going to set that in a separate bank account for taxes. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs skip this step. They don't save for taxes. And then what happens is every quarter, they come up short, it becomes a really big stress point. It's super important that you don't skip this. I did for the first two years of entrepreneurship, I'm ashamed to say that I filed my taxes, but I didn't pay. And they ended up owing the IRS a lot of money. And it was really scary and a really big mistake that I made in the first two years of entrepreneurship. So don't do that. Set aside 15% and then pay estimated taxes on a quarterly basis. Fourth and finally, the most important part of this whole process is the operating expenses. For me and my business, after I've paid myself 10%, going straight into my future, profit first, and then I paid myself 30% going into my personal bank account, which is what I use for my living expenses, and then setting aside 15% for taxes, the rest of it that's left over is 45%. And this is what you use to run your business. No more, no less. 45% of every penny coming in through your door should be reset aside to grow your business. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down my operating expenses so that you can get an actual behind the scenes of what somebody that's running a million dollar business, what they're spending their money on in their business. The first thing that I invest in right at the top is mentorship and coaching. I spend about $5,000 every single month in my personal development, business strategy, and programs and books and educational materials that I need 
to educate myself. If you don't invest in a business coach, it is going to be very hard for you to grow your business and it's going to take a really long time. I wanna grow quickly and so I invest a lot of money every single month in my personal development so that I'm getting access to the best mentors and the best strategies and the best tactics to grow my business as quickly as possible. The second thing that I spend a lot of money on every single month in my personal business is software. Between ActiveCampaign, Pipedrive, Zoom, Acuity, GroupFunnels, just all these different things that we have set up running our business, a lot of automation stuff, that costs me about $3,500 a month. But we actually end up saving a lot of money because of this because we have so many automations in place that there's a lot of things that are just happening automatically. And my business is hustling for me rather than me having hustle in my business. So it's important to work smarter, not harder, and software allows you to do that. Next, I'm currently spending about $6,000 a month in ads. That's actually not very much and this is gonna go up over time. But I just started doing ads like last month so it's a really new thing for me. My entire business as you know it is built organically. So up until last month, I'd never spent any money on ads. And then finally labor. So right now I have about 20 amazing employees, 20 people that work for me, and I spend about $30,000 um, per month in labor. Now this involves independent contractors, we have a couple full-time people, but for the most part, these are independent contractors, independent team members that are helping me serve you, my clients and my audience. And then we have this $400, I don't know where it's from, but there you have it. So that is an inside behind the scenes look at what I spend my money on in my business. You get an idea of the amount of money I'm spending in labor, the amount of money I spend for my mentors, the amount of money I have towards my software. Every bit of it is worth it and this is how it looks to run a successful online business. Obviously in later videos, I'll break down even more who does what on my team and how much I pay them. We'll break down where I'm investing my money. We'll do a further breakdown. But for now, think of this like a bird's eye overview behind the scenes into the finances of a successful online entrepreneur. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am for, yeah, I'm making a post to my Facebook group with the questions that people have for me. It says, film me my next YouTube video on where my money goes. What cues do you have for me? Comment below and answer them, which for me is gonna be like two days from now, but for you, it's right now. All right, so every week what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking questions from you guys on Instagram, on, face, on my Facebook group, and on YouTube. So make sure you follow me on these platforms. We're gonna link them in all the places. <laughs> um, and by the way, I'm outside with my surfboards. This is the new nine foot log I got, and this is Will's. Five, five, ten. Five, ten. Something. I don't know. Something, something, something sexy. I'm still on the nine foot log because I can barely stand up, but you know, it's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some questions that I posted in my Facebook group specifically on this topic, right? The topic of the, the finances of successful entrepreneurs. So first question is from Aksha and she says, we'd like to know your investments, team budgets, and how you allocate profits versus reinvestments. Now, if you've gotten this far in the video, you know that most of it we covered and I kind of walked you guys through what I do, how I break down my investments, how I break down my team budgets, how I allocate everything. But really, if you want to go really deep with this, what I recommend you do is look into the book Profit First. I'm going to like put a little picture of it right here so you can see it. That's where I got the idea from. And, and really the book Profit First is all about making sure you bank and take home and pay yourself the most amount of money possible in your business. So I, that book will really walk through the logic and science behind and the strategy behind why I break up things into like a 10%, a 30%, a 15%, and a 45% breakdown. Uh, next question is from Ella, who says, I would love to know how much ad spend it takes before you truly see a good return. This is a super good question. In my experience, you don't see a lot of money until you spend a lot of money. So Facebook, from my understanding of this, and again, I pay ad guys to help me with this, but my understanding of this is you don't see a ton of like paying a little hundred dollars here or a hundred dollars there to boost a post. It's just flushing money down the toilet. So I really believe that I, you know, I built a million dollar business without ads. Do master organic marketing first. And then all you're doing with paid ads is just accelerating it or making it a little bit easier for you. So right now when you're just getting started, you have a ton of time. When you're a little bit further along in your entrepreneurship journey like me, you have more money and less time. So that's when it would make sense for you to pay for ads. But a lot of times people try to shortcut the process and they'll just, they think that ads is the magic bullet, but there's no magic bullet. And I'll tell you, I did, my first month of ads was this month. So like May 18th to June 18th, this was my first month of ads and we spent about $6,000. And I think anything really less than that, you're not gonna see a ton of results from. 
Uh, Lauren says taxes. How much should we be saving per contract? 15% write-offs. So I recommend this app called Keeper Tax. I'm gonna like put a little screen out of it, Keeper Tax. And what Keeper Tax does is it will text you, it'll sync with your business bank account, and it will text you with every purchase. And it'll say, Maria, I noticed that you spent $45.18 at Office Max. Was this a business expense? And then if it was a business expense, you can just reply, yes, it was, and it'll automatically categorize it as a business expense, and you can save money come tax time um, with that. So I recommend you install and sync up Keeper Tax. Finally, Matilda says, how do I make more sales? So Matilda, this is a super big question. I have a ton of YouTube videos on this, but if you wanted like a bird's eye overview, here's the factors you need to have. If you wanna make a lot of sales, number one, you have to have a product that people actually wanna buy. I, you know, we approve or don't approve about two to 3,000 posts per day in my Facebook group. So we see a lot of posts that aren't very good. We see a lot of offers that really aren't very good. Nine times out of 10, if your offer isn't selling, it's because you're trying to offer something that people don't really want. So make sure that whatever it is you're offering, people actually want to buy. Make sure that the price point is a good fit. A lot of times people are either charging way too much or way too little. So make sure you get your pricing right. And then make sure that you're in front of the right people. You could have the right offer and the right price point, but if you're in front of the wrong people in the wrong room, you're going to struggle to make sales. So you want to get those three factors in place. Hopefully this helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that when I was first starting my business, I always wanted to have, a, I was like a nosy Nancy, right? I wanted to see the little behind the scenes of what it actually looked like to be, you know, in the position of a successful entrepreneur and what their finances look like and how much they spent to their team and all this. And everybody's always hush hush about it. So hopefully you enjoyed this little behind the scenes. Um, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We are really upping the quality of our YouTube videos and I'm so excited. So if you've made it this far, you don't want to miss out any of the future ones. We've got some really freaking cool stuff planned. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Oh my God. Just in case you guys were wondering, that's what it takes to get the shot. Okay. <laughs> I can't get up. There we go. There we go. And that's 15. How did you do? What happened here? My door, 10% of it went straight to retirement. After I put. Yeah, so you like hold it for a second. It's so good. Like, it's like, such a subtle thing. I didn't notice it the first time. The second thing that I'll do is